So what I have is an activity that is meant to explain what quantum annealing is, or at least give across some of the concepts be behind quantum annealing. So basically I'm going to talk for a bit, uh, explain my thinking behind it, because I actually don't understand quantum annealing 100%, and I just want to see if I'm on the right track to this to get across a couple of concepts. Overall, it's one of my uh, rules of science communication to emphasize the observation rather than to worry too much about the explanation. So one of the effects in quantum mechanics is that, uh, say you have some kind of energy barrier, like this, and a particle is sitting on one side of that barrier. Now, we can increase the particle's energy to actually get up and over the barrier in this direction here. But one of the behaviors in quantum mechanics is that the particle could be on one side of the barrier and then suddenly appear on the other side. This is known as quantum tunneling, essentially appearing on one side and on the other side. It's a little bit like if you were to throw a tennis ball at a wall and at some point the tennis ball suddenly appears on the other side of the wall. This idea of quantum tunneling is one of the uh, principles in quantum annealing, which is a part of uh, quantum computing. So say we have some kind of surface, say something like that, and that if we want to find a solution, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to find the global minimum in this surface that will be the solution to our particular problem. Now, when we look at this, clearly that there is the lo global minimum. But we also have another minimum over here. This is a, a local minimum. Now, we could simulate a kind of annealing effect uh, in classical ways. If we uh, say we had a particle here, we thermally increased its, its energy. It could actually up and over that peak and end up here. That's our local minimum. But it's not the global minimum. If we took this a step further and actually included the quantum tunneling effect, then it's potential that the particle could end up finding a global minimum using this effect. So what we're trying to get across to students is a couple of things. First of all, the quantum tunneling effect, but how that could be used in a quantum computer to find a set of solutions. So with that in mind, here's my game. What we have are, instead of a two-dimensional representation like we're looking at on the paper, I've got a 3D shape here. This is going to be a 3D surface. Each of these are troughs, and all depending on its height or depth depends on whether I drop in to a, one of these numbers. So I've got these tokens here, and say I've got minus three, I've also got six. Uh, all of the tokens have all numbers between six and minus six written on them. And uh, basically, if it's a six, it's a trough that's uh, greater than minus three. That's uh, a low trough. So. We begin the game by randomly distributing all of these tokens through these containers. Once we've got all of our numbers sorted, we then drop into each of these containers a single marble. Now the way the game works is that we choose a particular direction that we're going to interrogate this surface at. And to begin with, we're going to be doing it in a way that uh, is just simply a simulated annealing event so it doesn't have the quantum tunneling. Simply we're just giving energy to a particle and it will come up and over and drop into a, uh, a trough that is lower than its current trough. If we had two troughs, say A and B, if A is greater than or equal to B, then the marble can go into B. If a is less than B, then the marble stays where it is. 
each step, everything's happening at once, but physically I can only move one marble at a time. So we have to just bear in mind that what we're trying to simulate here is something that happens all at once, all in one go. So when I move a marble over, uh, that is, say if, if this marble ends up going into this one here, and then this one goes into here, I'm not gonna take both marbles at once, I'm simply going to do it to that one marble there. So, let's do it with this classical version first. We're going to interrogate this surface in different directions designated by this arrow. So we're going to start in this direction. Three is less than six, it stays there. Six is uh, greater than two, so it stays there. Two, negative two, less than four, stays there. Two is greater than five, negative five. So two. Okay, we've done all of those in that direction. Now, we're going to interrogate it in this direction. Zero is the same as zero, so going by our rules, A is greater than or equal to B. I'm just gonna move those over. Okay, this direction. All right, at this point, the game is more or less complete. We've got these zeros simply jumping backwards and forwards between each other, but otherwise everything is in a state that it's not going to move on from. So we've found a whole bunch of minimums. We've got uh, minus one over here, that's minus six there. Over here, we've got minus six. Over here, minus five. Over here, minus three. And here, minus two. Now that was the first version of the game. The second version of the game, we play with one extra rule, but let's reset it up. So here we are set up again. We're gonna play the game again, but with one extra rule, which is our tunneling. Essentially, whenever we interrogate in a particular direction, rather than just looking at the chamber next to it, we're gonna look all the chambers in this direction here and go to the one that's smallest, effectively being our tunneling effect as this thing tunnels to the smallest point that is in this direction. So, a game again from start, we've got the arrow going in this way, and again, everything happens at once. Let's begin. Okay, so very quickly we got down to a much smaller set of answers, minus six, minus six, and minus three. So like I was saying, this is meant to just get across two ideas, this idea of quantum tunneling, uh, but also just the basic idea of uh, using this in a computational sense. The trouble is, I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is. Quantum annealing is quite difficult to get my head around. So here's where I need some suggestions. Am I on the right track with this? Does this get across the ideas that I'm hoping to get across? And importantly, am I just completely wrong and barking up the wrong tree? <laughs>